All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to go over, uh, you know, I think just a one comment here. Um, I'll go over both those. Why not? And then I'm going to go, I'm going to touch on this here. I'm going to play a few seconds of that. And then I'll probably end it on this video here uh, where this gentleman, he talk, he's talking about Revelation 20. So let's get into the comments first of all. And of course, I always appreciate the comments and the questions, um, you know, because this is how we um, grow, right? This is how we become sharper. And I want to encourage people to challenge me and uh, challenge others. And by doing so, um, this is a great way and opportunity to learn and, and to teach. You know, whenever you're teaching somebody, you're also learning. And whenever you're learning, you're teaching, and and it, it works together to help us grow. So, first of all, Wedden1051919 says, Are Christians still punished after the resurrection? Is that what Romans 14 is saying? Romans 14, verse 12, So then every one of us shall give an account or I'm sorry so then every one of us shall give account to himself of himself to God boy I butchered that terrible didn't I so let's go to Romans chapter 14 verse 12 all right so in the context here so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God there we go okay now in the context of this this is at the last day on judgment day the great day of the Lord which happens at the end of the world all right so to make it real simple if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are born of the Spirit of God then judgment has already been given to you right now and um, so on the day of the Lord we will be transformed into our glorified bodies we will be changed in a moment we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye all right and we will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air now that's because Jesus is in you that are born of God so you are pure in the eyes of God because Jesus is pure. His purity is so pure that he makes you pure despite all of your imperfections. That's how pure our Lord Jesus Christ is. Now, if you're not born of God, you're in big trouble. Big, big trouble. And so essentially this is real simple this is not uh, rocket science it's you everybody will give an account for themselves if they're born of God they are transformed if they're not born of God they are destroyed they are thrown into the lake of fire they die the second death all right it's really that simple and that's really what is taught all throughout the Bible and you know obviously you know I like to uh, let's use a one we'll go to one place here in the Bible in Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt it's that simple one way or the other alright now Okay, where are we at here? So, that's all that means. Okay, so the question was, will we be punished after the resurrection? No. No. Not at all. So, after the resurrection, we are, you know, purified. There is no more sin, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. All those things will be done away with. So, there would be no reason 
for God to punish us after the resurrection. Of course, on that day, the unjust will be punished. But we, the just, will not be punished at all and never afterwards. All right, so I hope that clears it up a little bit. Uh, um, we can always continue that conversation for sure. I have a real problem with the Message Bible and the Good News Bible. There are some very good translations that are not in English. I'm sorry, in Elizabeth, Elizabethan English. Um, <laughs> uh, translations from what would be my question. I, yeah, look, man, you know, people assume, well, they say, well, the King James is a translation. Translation from what? From the Greek and the Hebrew. Well, the Greek and the Hebrew are languages. They're not Bibles. You do understand that, right? I mean, you might as well say a translation from the Chinese. What's the difference? There are no originals in the Greek or Hebrew. And you go all the way back to the very first original. You remember what happened? The very first? The very first original? The very first original the very first original um you know Moses had the very first originals from God let me let me find a verse for you Okay, and it came to pass as soon he, as he came down, I'm sorry, this is talking about Moses. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp. This is after he received the originals from God himself. Think about that, man. Moses received the word of God directly from God. Think about that. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing and the boogie and the woogie and, and Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and brake them beneath the mount. He smashed them. That's the originals. That's what Moses thought of the originals. It's interesting, man. I'm telling you, it's very, very interesting. So, Moses smashed the originals people put their reliance on the on the originals and that Moses smashed them whereas there are people like me who believe that the Word of God comes directly from God you see the two sides in this one verse on one side you have Moses received the Word of God directly from God the Bible that I hold in my hand it's not from men it's directly from God I guarantee that and I've been preaching that day after day it you know the key to understanding is faith it's always been about faith you if you ought to believe the Bible you hold in your hands is from God because it is it's directly from God so why why wouldn't you believe that? If you believe if you don't believe that, then you don't believe the Bible. Not fully. Okay, and then on the flip side, you have people putting their faith in the originals which Moses smashed. There are no originals. There are no originals. And now think about think about this. In Genesis chapter 2, Adam says, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man now what language was that spoken in nope it wasn't spoken in Hebrew anybody that tells you Adam spoke Hebrew is a liar an ignorant ignorant liar You know, sometimes I wonder, do people even care about the truth anymore? In Genesis chapter 11, God saw that these guys were, this is after the flood, okay? After the flood, the population started to boom again. And God saw that they were building a tower and that nothing would stop them from doing what they imagined to do and so God said let us go down and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech All right, so when this happened when God confounded the language nobody understood the original language nobody so that means when Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. When Adam said those words, they were not Hebrew. They were the original language which nobody understood the moment God confounded the language. So, that means this is a translation. Whether it be Hebrew, whether it be Greek, whether it be English, whether it be Chinese, it's a translation. Now the liars, just like the Muslims, will say, well, you have to go back to the original language. Well, if that's the case, I'm, I'm doomed. I'm doomed, doomed. Doomed, 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 I mean, doomed. Doom. I'm doomed, and you're doomed. We're all doomed. In Deuteronomy 8, verses 3, it says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. And he answered and said, him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So, if you have to go back to the original language to know what God really says I'm doomed I barely know English but it's the only language I know now forget about Hebrew or Greek or Chinese forget about all those I ain't got a chance man you realize I took German in high school and I got nine percent for the semester nine percent out of uh, possible hundred percent I got nine percent I think that's the school record even 30 some years later nobody's ever scored that low in the history of German nobody's ever scored that low and I got the record I didn't stand a chance and my and my last name is German and you want me to learn Hebrew to know what God says I mean God says man should not live by bread alone but but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God that's what God says and I have to go to a foreign language man I ain't that smart and neither are you because nobody today is born into the ancient Hebrew or the Koine Greek and even Paul himself says whether there be tongues they shall cease and the ancient Hebrew 
and the Koine Greek has ceased. All right, and then it's very clear in the life to come hereafter. All the languages that are spoken today, including ancient Hebrew and Koine Greek, they're going to be done away with. And for then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. That's not going to be ancient Hebrew. It's not going to be Koine Greek. It's not going to be English. It's not going to be Chinese. It's going to be a brand new language, a pure language. Okay, so... Yeah, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about, and I can go on and on. So if you have any follow-ups, you want to just, for the sake of of uh, having a little bit of fun here, Edge 2 Sword 186, just go ahead and say whatever translation you think is the perfect pure word of God, and let's examine it. Let's examine it. And one thing that uh, you know people have asked me about, and I'll say... Look, the first thing, you know, there's different routes you could take. Now, there's so many examples to give. But, you know, one thing that I, I like to uh, really teach upon, I guess, is oops, what does it say in Matthew 18? Because when you collate or uh, compare the other Bible versions the perversions you'll notice a lot of them omit that and you'll notice here on the left hand side not all the translations are mentioned alright and like the ESV for example I shared this yesterday not even mentioned weird isn't it now how weird is it when you open up your Bible and they can't even get the numbers right <laughs> it's weird and so all the numbers and chapters come from God. I wonder if I failed to mention this yesterday. Acts 13, verse 33. He has fulfilled us, their, chil their children, by raising up Jesus as it is written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have become your father. In the second psalm. All the numberings in the Bible are from God as well. All right. It's important it's important to have faith it's always been important to have faith so anyways um, I appreciate those comments right there fellas all right and uh, please follow up if if you want to continue that conversation now let's go here I want to share something with you that it's gonna emphasize a point that I've been making and just listen stand up for their faith so I think in that time in extreme persecution especially towards the end because I think we're living in that now and I think we're even standing up for that now in our faith and we're not worshiping the beast and when those things happen but especially towards the end which I do believe is going to get worse um, and there will be a future Antichrist. And I think things could get really ugly and will and even in America that I think it'll be obvious. Yeah, no, there's... <laughs> I, you know, I would like to be standing next to these people that say, oh, there's going to be a future Antichrist. I want to be standing next to these people when Jesus comes and listen to their expl explanation when they're talking to Jesus and, and telling Jesus you can't come back yet because the future because the future Antichrist isn't here yet yeah I would love to hear that conversation I really would now what are you guys looking for really all you futurist all oh, this is gonna happen in the future oh the Antichrist is he's gonna happen in the future he's He's not here today, boy. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing, really. That's amazing because he's got you fooled. And there's nothing I can say or do 
to break you out of that. You gotta figure it out on your own. Second Thessalonians two, verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means. Uh, I, it's like that right there goes in one ear and straight out the other for so many people. It's incredible. You go to Matthew twenty four. Jesus is asked, "What shall be the sign of thy coming?" Or what will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the very first thing Jesus says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. And look, think, think about this, man. Come on. Evil men and seducers shall, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You don't think deception is a big part of the end time? And here you are standing in front of God and everybody and saying, Oh, there is no Antichrist. That's, that's going to happen in the future, boys. Just ignore the Roman Catholic Church. Ignore the book of Daniel. Ignore the whole Bible. Ignore the Lord Jesus Christ. And just believe in me. I mean, really, why not? Just be honest and say that's what you believe. I mean, what's wrong with honesty? Really? I mean, if you put the truth above everything, then just be honest and learn from your mistakes, right? Why not? What do you got to lose? Pride? Oh, boy. You can't lose pride, can you? Be made a fool. Well, sometimes it's good to be a fool. That's how you learn. If you never, be, if you're never a fool in life, you'll never learn nothing. Now, here we have an interesting verse in um, this chapter, verse four: Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now we read a parallel to that in Daniel when he's speaking of the fourth beast. And you'll have to remember, you'll have to, uh, Paul, uh, you'll, I'm sorry, you'll have to um, forgive me. You'll have to, I don't remember exactly where that's at. Daniel 11. Okay. Daniel 11. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Here. Let's do it this way. For he shall magnify himself above God. Neither shall he regard the God of his father, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above God who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and what does the word Pope mean Holy Father God Almighty he just flat out comes out and says that he is God Almighty and people oh that's not that's not the Antichrist he's a good guy the Pope the Pope's a good guy. He's uh, Jesus Christ on earth, right? Just a good, good old boy. Just a good old boy, right? And just to, to hell with Jesus, you know. He says, "Call no man father." Yeah, just ignore Jesus and just let's love the Pope, everybody. Come on. Matthew 23 verse 9 and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven what do they call the Pope Holy Father what do they call all the Catholic priests father father Sadducci or Sarducci or whatever that guy's name is uh, what was that on SNL am I getting that right father Sarducci you know, the, the cigarette-smoking Catholic priest? I mean, that's about as the most accurate version of a Catholic priest you'll ever find is that guy that was on SNL. All right, so the point is here that this, this is talking about 
what's happening right now when you go to Daniel and he talks about the four beasts until the end of the world he names the first three beasts the Babylon Medes and Persians and the Greek Empire and we can conclude beyond any doubt that the fourth beast is the Roman Empire there shouldn't be any you can't dispute it you can ignore it and that's what people do but you can't dispute it an absolute fact Luke chapter 2 verse 1 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed Caesar Augustus was a Roman Emperor now of course we know by reading the Bible that the Romans killed Jesus right now the Jews forced their hand if you will they they uh, they caused they're they're the ones that pushed this right it's because the Jews pushed it that the Romans killed Jesus so the Jews had Jesus killed the Romans actually did it and then of course Daniel talks about how the fourth beast will kill the Lord or kill uh, will uh, you know what's that how's that phrased there oh I gotta find it now somebody listening might not be familiar uh, is it sacrifice is that the word I'm looking for I, I gotta find it for y'all there might be somebody new Alright, so the, the vision about the daily sacrifice that's about the Lord Jesus Christ in the mix in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease it's talking about the Messiah which is Jesus Christ and uh, from the time of the, I think it's verse I think it's right there I think it's I think it's this one here an arm shall stand on his part talking about the fourth beast which is the Roman Empire and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice they the fourth beast the Romans took away the daily sacrifice now Jesus laid down his life you know we talk about how the Bible talks about how the Jews killed the Lord Jesus Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and are contrary to all men right there talking about the Jews all right maybe I highlight that there just so somebody can see it all right who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men the Jews had the Romans kill the Lord Jesus but the bottom line is Jesus laid down his life he could have prevented it but he didn't did he he willingly laid down his life for the whole world all right and he could have prevented it I'm not sure this is what I'm this is not what I'm looking for is it yeah no this is it thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels Jesus could have prevented it he could he could have prevented the Romans from killing him which the Jews pushed the Romans to have the Lord Jesus Christ killed I mean he could have prevented it right so where are we at here so this is that's all that means here in Daniel uh, chapter 11 verse 31 and shall take away the daily sacrifice the look the fourth beast the Roman Empire they they didn't there's never been a person who's laid down their life and and uh, became a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world it's only Jesus he's the only one and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate and that's this um, worldview of unbelief which 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 is 
overwhelms the world today. It's being taught to the, every child all throughout the world. This abomination of unbelief. Alright, right, so this idea, oh, the, the Antichrist hasn't come yet. I mean, come on. Eh. You're blind, man. You're you're essentially taking the side of the Pope who is the Antichrist. Now think about this. In Revelation 17, the beast that was and is not and yet is. The beast that was and is not and yet is. The Roman Empire that was and is not and yet is. The Roman Empire that transformed from a physical empire into a spiritual empire and what is a great whore well a whore or a prostitute is a woman pretending to be the wife performing the duties of a wife but she is not the wife so this great big organization this whole rev book of revelation is talking about the beast which is the great whore which is the roman catholic church the great whore that sits upon many waters, and the many waters which thou sawest, where the whore sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And what do we see going on today? The Roman Catholic Church dominates the world. Every country, all around the world. It's incredible. It's amazing. And not just that they're so popular, but they're so wealthy. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. It's incredible what the Roman Catholic Church has accomplished. It's amazing, really. You know, 50 years ago, maybe I better go back 60, 70 years ago, you couldn't run for president of the United States if you were Catholic. This country used to be very guarded against Catholics. Now, you can't. Nobody knows the difference between a Catholic and a Christian, and they're polar opposites. It's incredible how this whole world has let its guard down, and you got these guys that have no understanding whatsoever. No, oh, the Antichrist he hasn't come yet. He just bow down and. You know, worship uh, the Pope and worship the you know the Catholic uh, priest and and just you know that. I mean, come on, man! You can't see it, man. You can't see it, and you do know, don't you, that the church was not built on Peter. You ought to know that. That should be pretty obvious, no? What is the church, the true church of God built on? Right. So, if you go to Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus says, And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right, there is. However, church is built on Peter. And just, a, what, five verses later? Let's do it this way. Upon this rock, and then... If you think the church is built on Peter, you're in the wrong church. Now let's think about this now. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock. What rock is he talking about? He's not talking about Peter Pan. Go back to the context of this conversation. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippia, whatever. He asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. 
He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the rock that the church is built on. Right there. Right there. That's what we believe. That's what we put our hope in. That's all of our trust and faith and all the praise that we give to God is the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is our Lord and Savior. It's not Peter. What in the world is wrong with people? To say Peter, who denied the Lord Jesus three times? You, the rock is built on Peter? Are you stupid? Really? Well, you know what? They got the whole world deceived, don't they? They got the whole world fooled. They got the whole world deceived. It's incredible. And so it stands to reason, right, that in the last days, because of this great falling away, that the Antichrist has gained in power. And because he's gained in power, the deception of the world has grown and grown and grown. And because of the deception has grown and grown and grown, the power of the Antichrist only increases. It's incredible. It really is. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. You, what do you think? There's going to be a falling away? There's going to be great a world of great deception? And think about it you're you're not putting the you're not connecting the dots you're saying in the future there's going to come a time when the whole world's going to be under great deception and then because of this great deception or falling away the antichrist is going to be revealed well <laughs> you think well, there's coming a time when Dan Rather is going to come on TV and do an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the Antichrist and say, hey, look, everybody, the Antichrist. Let's ask him a few questions. You, don't, you think that's how it's going to be? Seriously, what are you thinking? The CNN, Fox News, they're going to announce to the world, oh, well, the Antichrist, he's... He's here. He is. Let's talk to him, and then everybody's just gonna love him. You're gonna have a shirt that says, "I'm the Antichrist." Yeah, you think it's gonna be like that? No, that's that. The Bible just doesn't describe it like that at all. It doesn't make any sense, man. I mean, it's like, come on. All right, so. Uh, people are extremely naive and this is why I keep saying I don't think people put any thought into what they're teaching seriously all right so there's something else I wanted to share I didn't want to talk about that people are gonna die just like they do in other countries there's no confusion oh, right. about who the Christians are in a lot of other countries because they have to stand so then up. What, what do they do with the forehead the mark on the forehead or the hand there's, I mean, is that symbolic? Yes, that? yes. Because oh, there's things that that's tied to, Dan. I can't remember off the... I'll, I will get you those. Um, they're from Old Testament thinking of what that means, talking about the forehead and the hands, the things you do and think. And I, All right, so I kind of agree with what he's saying here. It is symbolic. And there is examples in the Old Testament where the hands represent work and the forehead represents knowledge or what you believe. Now, and obviously, the mark of the beast is symbolic of those things. The work you do, who do you work for, and the things you believe, who do you believe in, you know, those, those are examples of worshiping or respecting the beast or the government. 
And you think of the Republicans and the Democrats, you got the right arm and the left arm, or the right wing and the left wing of the same beast. And that beast is the government, just as Daniel describes that the four kings are four beasts which shall rise out of the earth. Plain language that ought to be very simple to understand. Right? Plain, simple language. And then, so what do we got today? We got a world of people who argue day after day about politicians who represent the government. And they think, oh, Trump's going to save us or Obama's going to save us. They worship those beast these great beasts which are four are four kings the beast is a word that rep that just means a king and his kingdom and uh, the president is the same thing as a king same thing president comes from a word that means high priest he's a high priest of this land really it's the same thing so these people will spend 16 hours a day watching Fox News or CNN and arguing politics day in, day out. It's because they worship the beast. That's what this is talking about. We're in a time like no other time in the history of the world. And, you know, I used to do it. I'm guilty of it, too. <clears throat> you know, I used to argue with my mom. She was a Democrat, and I was a Republican at the time. I'd say, Mom, those Democrats, they're all liars. Mom would say, No, Jimmy, those Republicans, they're all liars. Well, it turns out that we were both right. Because they're all liars. And they're all part of the one, of the same beast. They're all working together against us and against God's people. And the evidence of the Bible is overwhelming. It's incredible, really, how all the answers are right here in the Bible. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. We are the anointed of God. So you, you hear all these people arguing politics, you know, talking about racial in, in you know r racial insensitivity or whatever. You know, that's the one that really burns my butt. If you're really against racism and you're for equality here in the United States, then if you're really honest about that, that you're sincere, then why aren't you outraged about Native Americans being segregated, set apart from the rest of society? Oh, well, they get a bunch of money. What? Well, you're, you're all outraged about, uh, you know, the black folk 200 years ago who were given jobs and a place to live. What's the difference? You don't think there's poverty in the Native American community? There's not only poverty, there's crime that goes un... You know, how do I say that? It goes unpunished. Crime that goes unpunished against Native Americans. Now, what's the difference, man? You're outraged about one, but not the other. Why? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Because the TV is telling you what to be outraged about. The TVs are playing with your emotions and telling you. And you're listening because you worship the beast. Whatever the beast says, whatever that television says, that's what you do. Uh, this world is worse than what people even can fathom. I really believe that. So, I, the, you know, I didn't even get to the point this guy was going to talk about. And he's going to say it here in a second. He's going to say, oh, well, and he said it before this as well. I'm going to spare you all. 
he's saying, well, you got to look to what historians teach, and that's you know whatever the historians taught, that's what that's what you got to believe. And that's the problem with the world today. Nobody's believing what the Bible actually says, which is the Word of God. Instead, they're believing what other men say. They're putting their trust in what other men say rather than putting their trust in the Bible that they hold in their hands. I, there's, there's different um, Was it a part of the Jewish process. laws and things that they had well, to do? Well, yeah, because part? you actually put, you strap things right. and verses on your forehead and your hands. And so there, there's different things that are tied to that are pretty obvious that I think, like, like I said, look into even what MacArthur says on that. Dad. I, 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 I Look what MacArthur says about that. I, 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 what about this? I got an idea. Can I raise my hand? I got an idea. How about considering what the Bible says? Wow. Huh? I mean, wow. How about reading what the Bible says and believing what the Bible says? Because the Bible is from God, directly from God not from man it's from God there are numerous Bible verses to support that came not by the will of man came not by the will of man it came not by the will of man for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost the Bible is from God you believe God can resurrect you from the dead, but God can't speak to you in your own language? God can't give you a book that you can believe in? Even though it directly says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read? Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live? Boy, oh boy, what kind of God do you worship, really? Don't you have any faith in the Word of God at all? Do you need man to tell you what God says? That's a that's a problem. All right, so I was going to get into this guy here. And I don't know what he says, but maybe we'll do that some other time. I, I want to try to keep these videos down to about 15 minutes. I'm afraid I went over again today. Doggone it. Anyways, you have any questions, comments, anything like that? You think I'm stupid, ugly, and all that sort of thing? Please share that as well. Now, anything uh, is appreciated. All these comments whether they're for or against are always appreciated okay and uh, above all you know uh, just enjoy this day you know there are too many miserable people in the world and um, it's okay to to uh, you know have these discussions and in that sort of thing and these back and forth dialogues that's okay but do it with joy and do it with love for one another all right Okay, anyways.